Hello grade 12 students, welcome to another accounting video. In this video, we'll be looking at fixed assets and the asset register. So we all know that there are two types of assets, right? Non-current assets and current assets. The non-current assets are the ones lasting for more than 12 months and they are also known as fixed assets or tangible assets. And there are only three types of tangible assets you'll be dealing with in grade 12 and you've been dealing with them from grade 10, which uh, land and buildings, vehicles and equipment. And please note that land and buildings, they do not depreciate. In actual fact, when you further on your study, when you get to varsity, you get to realize that land and buildings are actually separated into two and buildings, they depreciate. And land, land does not depreciate. When you have a plot of land, it doesn't depreciate. It doesn't lose value. Instead, it appreciates. So we have three types of fixed assets, land and buildings, vehicles and equipment. Now that's those the only, these are the only fixed assets that you'll have to know and that you'll be dealing with in grade 12. We also have what we call the fixed asset note number three. Remember that our fixed assets are found, are recorded in the statement of financial position or the balance sheet. And the, the supporting note for the fixed assets is the note number three. And I've compiled here a template of note number three which includes our fixed assets, landing buildings, vehicles, and equipment. Right, so now let's take a look at this note. And you've done this. This is actually kind of a revision of the note because you did it in grade 11. So you know that the starting point of your note, for me, in order to understand this note, I can say this part, this first part, is for the beginning of the year. You know, this is the amount here. This is where we'll be writing our totals. So, but for the sake of this, I'll, I'll write here that this is the part, this is the beginning of the year part. And this part, it's the jury, the year, during the year. And this final part here is the end of the year so it, the note is divided into three parts guys it's divided into three parts this means that this is the cost at the beginning accumulated at the uh, depreciation at the beginning the current value at the beginning of the year you obviously know that the, your cost is the price that you bought or purchased the fixed asset at meaning it will be the price of the land and buildings You'll put it here, the price of land and buildings, price of vehicles, and price of equipment. That's the initial cost price, right? Initial cost price that you purchased the land and buildings or the fixed asset with. The accumulated depreciation is the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year before we include the depreciation for the year. It's the accumulated depreciation at the beginning of the year. And because the accumulated depreciation reduces the value of our asset, it will be subtracted. But since I said land and buildings, they do not depreciate, it means automatically accumulated depreciation will be zero here. But for these ones, you'll have an amount and here you'll have an amount. The amount is where is in brackets because it decreases the value of the asset. And then carry value, you get it by saying cost subtract the accumulated depreciation. Right? It is. You say in this amount, subtract this amount. You get the carry value at the beginning of the year. That's the first part, the beginning of the year. The second part is during the year. What happens during the year? So if we acquire acquire more land and buildings, you'll include an amount here where it additions at cost and if we dispose we sell any land and buildings you'll include the amount here and you subtract please note that when you acquire more land and buildings this amount you include here it is at cost or for, for this applies for, for both vehicles and equipment and when you acquire or i mean when you sell when you sell or dispose land and buildings or vehicles or equipment the amount here that you enter here it's the amount at carrying value it's the amount of carrying value you do not subtract the cost when you recording the disposals of the fixed assets here in the fixed asset note number three now and then this is the depreciation for the current year please note it's depreciation for the current year for this year only that's what you record here and because it decreases the value of the asset 
you'll enter around and here obviously it will be how much zero under the London buildings and then you'll get your what you'll get your carrying value amount here for each fixed asset right so that was your during the year this is the activities that can happen during the year these ones and these carrying amounts you add them together you'll get an amount here this amount is what goes to the balance sheet that's why that means your the, the 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 amount that you're going to see next to London buildings or next let me say next to non-current assets in your balance sheet will be this amount this is the carrying value they are represented at carrying value not at the original cost right that's very much important guys now what is it that the carry value because we the statement of financial position shows us the value of our assets or abilities or equity at a certain date the value we cannot overstate them or, or, or understate them we must show that they have depreciated they no longer have the same value that they had before and then you get the carrying value and then here this is the accumulated depreciation at the end because this part is for the end of the year it's at the end it simply means that to get this amount you're going to add depreciation for the year you're going to add it to depreciation at the beginning of the year to get accumulated depreciation at the end and this is the cost please note that this cost here it must include additions it includes additions right and excludes what excludes the disposals it excludes the disposals but to make things easier for you you'll just this cost must always be this cost the cost at the beginning let me write it here this is cost at beginning plus additions right and then accumulated depreciation here it's accumulated depreciation at beginning plus depreciation for the year right simple the carrying value you going in order for you to find the carrying value of course you can say cost subtract accumulated depreciation or you can just calculate by saying carrying value here the carrying value you get here plus additions at cost subtract disposals you'll get your depreciation uh, or additions carrying value plus additions at cost subtract disposals subtract depreciation for the year you'll get your carrying value let me write it here carrying value is cost to cost plus additions subtract disposals subtract depreciation you'll get your carrying value at the end right right so you t no this is not it's not cost it's carrying value at the beginning carrying value at beginning right so you just taking this amount plus this subtract this subtract this you get this or you can simply say cost subtract this you get this so it must balance fine now that's that's just about it for the asset note number three now let's go to the asset register the asset register is sort of like a document which contains information about all the fixed assets of the entity right meaning you you'll have this document which contains which tells you that we're having if we have we owning vehicles it will tell you we have vehicle a vehicle b vehicle c maybe a mercedes benz a vw a bmw it will just tell you it will give you the cost price of them of each asset that we have the useful life the rate of depreciation the carrying value and the accumulated depreciation right it's created for internal control purposes so that we we can know when any of our fixed assets are missing right yes so that's just about it when it comes to the the asset register guys and then let me just explain depreciation a little bit just a reminder but of course you did this you know that depreciation can be done using two methods cost price can calculate using two methods cost price or the diminishing balance method using the cost price method you use the initial so the cost price method you use the initial cost right but using the diminishing balance method you'll be using the carrying value right so if we bought an equipment for hundred thousand this is the cost price and the carrying value is eighty thousand accumulated depreciation it's twenty 
thousand. When using the cost price method, let's say the rate of depreciation is twenty percent using cost price method and ten percent using diminishing balance. This is cost price method. When you calculate depreciation using cost price method, you'll see hundred thousand multiplied by zero point two times the period that it it. It, it existed the period that it was present in the entity right so let's just let's just assume it was there for one year so it will be 12 over 12 of course which will give you twenty thousand. that's the depreciation right but if you were using the diminishing balance method diminishing balance you would have set carrying value first which is how much in this case i've already calculated the carrying value for you but you know that carrying value is cost subtract accumulated depreciation so it's hundred thousand subtract twenty thousand you get eighty thousand then you multiply it by 0 0.1 times the period it was in it it, it has been present in the entity so you'll get eight thousand here your new carrying value it's seventy two thousand it's eighty thousand minus eight thousand which is seventy two thousand right please note when you're using the cost price method somewhere at some point because now the carrying value will be eighty thousand minus twenty thousand which should be sixty thousand meaning you at some point you're going to reach a point where the assets carrying value is Twenty thousand, and you calculate depreciation for the year, you get twenty thousand. Therefore, when calculating the new carrying value, you're going to say twenty thousand minus twenty thousand, and actually that's after three years, right? So here it will say your carrying value is zero, zero rent. But you know, because an asset is an object, it's a physical object, it exists. We can never have. A carrying value of zero rent. So when you face this is a situation where you have the carrying value equaling to the depreciation, or the depreciation be more than the carrying value. For example, if it was twenty one thousand here and the asset is twenty thousand, make sure that you reduce the carrying value to one rent. Do not reduce it to zero rent or a negative carrying value. You always reduce it to one rent, meaning your the limit. Or the minimum value that your asset can have is one hundred. It cannot be zero or negative, guys. That's important. That's very much important. So meaning here in your note number three and your balance sheet, your asset, if it has fully depreciated, you must be recorded at one hundred. Thank you very much, guys. I'll do an example on the fixed asset note. Bye.